The Ghana Press Association, in collaboration with the Canadian High Commission, held a two-day training program for media workers on the effective coverage of the local government elections over the weekend. Michael Khan reports. Article 71 of the Constitution of Guyana states that local government is a vital aspect of democracy and shall be organized so as to involve as many people as possible in the task of managing and developing the communities in which they live. It also states that Parliament shall provide for a countrywide system of local government through the establishment of organs of local democratic power as an integral part of the political organization of the state. In compliance with Article 71 of the Constitution, 71 local authority areas comprising of nine municipalities or towns, namely Mabaruma, Anna Regina, Georgetown, New Amsterdam, Rose Hall, Carriveton, Bartica, Lethem, and Linden, along with 62 neighborhood democratic councils (NDCs), have been established in Guyana. Over the weekend, the Guyana Press Association, in collaboration with the Canadian High Commission, held a two-day workshop for media operatives with the main aim of edifying them about the local government election system and mechanisms so that they will be able to disseminate accurate information to the public before, on, and after E-Day. Speaking at the opening of the training program on Saturday last, the, at the Canadian International Development Agency CWO room was Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield who spoke about the role of GCOM and offered explanations on the local government elections system. Local government in itself is not new. And while I won't go into the history of, of local governance, I'll, I'll start as a base with reference to the legislation of TONA in local government elections arriving after many years of deliberation in, in what was referred to then as the task force. They took some time and they arrived at legislation that will guide the operations of, of local governments. That law was assented to in September of 2009 and gave teeth, as it were, to housing. Local governance is going to be operationalized as far as we treat with elections. And then those councillors who would have been elected, how they would um, choose a chairperson or in municipalities, the chief elections officer further explained. Electors get into polling stations. They'll be required to vote twice, one for the PR and one for the force passengers. How do we arrive at that? Because I think I'll go into the history of that. The task force felt that in their deliberations, I'm sure when Commissioner Alexander is here, who was part of the task force, how they arrive at this hybrid. Suffice it to say, um, clearly there was need, a fundamental need for individuals who in their own minds feel strongly that they can make an input into the communities in which they live at the level of a councillor to be involved. But prior to, prior to the passage of the amendment in 09, was one across the, the board arrangement where political parties in the main were the contestors of these elections with the Chief Elections Officer, Deputy CEO Vishnu Prasad, along with Commissioners Sais Gunraj, Vincent Alexander and Charles Corbin, were also in attendance to interact with media workers from across the three counties of Guyana. It was noted that there are two primary objectives of local government. One, to enable democratic local decision making and action by and on behalf of communities and the two to promote the social, economic, environmental and cultural well-being of communities. The CEO stressed that the approval by Parliament of the Local Authorities Elections Amendment 
Act No. 26 of 2009 provides for local government elections to be held in all of the 71 local authority areas in Guyana using a mixed electoral system of proportional representation and first-past-the-post, which provides opportunities for voluntary groups, political parties, and individual candidates to contest for seats in the municipalities and MDCs. Only voluntary groups and political parties can contest in the proportional representation aspect of local government elections. They can also contest any or all of the seats under the constituency component of the elections, providing that the candidates live in the said constituency. Under the first past the post component, an individual can contest for only one seat in a single constituency where he or she is registered and resides. 50% or half the number of councillors of each local authority area will be elected through the proportional representation component and the other 50% through the first past the post or constituency component. During his discourse, Mr. Lowenfield also highlighted If I'm in Buxton Falls as a group and the Buxton Falls has a required amount of constituencies uh, that makes up the the local authority area. As a group, I can participate in all of the constituency or a portion of um, or more than one of the constituencies once I'm designated as a group. As an individual, I can only partake in one of the constituencies in the local authority area. So let's go slowly on that. I'm a party, political party. I can contest all of the constituencies in local authority areas, political parties. As a voluntary group, I can take part in all of or if I cannot base on my um, popularity, um, all or all of or a part of. So if I'm 15, I can take part in, in seven, in eight, in six. I would have obtained um, in the municipality of Georgia and in Amsterdam, for example. So if the parties that can take all, the voluntary groups, when they form themselves into a group, can take part in all. Or for the individual, taking part only in a constituency. Local government elections will be held on March 18, 2016, after an absence of 22 years. Michael Kahn reporting for Channel 8 News from the Canadian International Development Agency boardroom at Main and New Market Streets, Georgetown, Guyana.